Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel. And my fellow web devs, we have to talk about rendering modes. When building websites nowadays, people often reach for a JavaScript framework like Vue or also Angular, React, Swell, Solid, you name it. And commonly when they build a public facing page, right, we need something called service and rendering to beef up the SEO, like uh, make sure the HTML contains the content and so on, so on. So most of you might be aware of that. But the big problem is that SSR is a super broad term. And well, the understanding might differ from developer to developer, also depending on the preliminary knowledge that they have. Maybe they worked with non JavaScript frameworks like Laravel before, and they also render things on the server. So is that also server side rendering? Because it's rendered on the server, right? And what is with static site generation, right? If you have a framework like Nuxt, for example, say, hey, please generate my whole site statically as static assets, it will still be an SPA of the initial request, while there are other static site generators out there that will just give you exactly that, no JavaScript, but just static HTML. So I prepared a little infographic um, and we'll hangle through that and see how different rendering modes affect each other with a big, big decision tree and make sure that you're all aware of all the differences. And the very first question we start with is, does the server generate HTML? And I mean generate quote unquote as in, will there be actual content in the HTML, right? It's not just like an empty shell loading your JavaScript. And we start going down all the way to the no route, which is obviously the left, the red line. For people having a red green blindness, then you might not see that, so it's the left line. And we go all the way down here. And then we say, okay, we don't even have server side rendering, whatever this means, but if the server, if the server doesn't generate any kind of content in the HTML, then it's not really server side rendering. Right, so that's one good thing to know. We start with that generating HTML and like, is there content in there? It's not just a static shell to load your JavaScript. SSR, otherwise no SSR. And let's see what that means. So if we go along the route, then we have the next question, which is, is it an SPA? So is it a single page application? Is there a JavaScript framework eventually rendering our HTML, right? So let's also go for the no route because if we say like, okay, it's the server doesn't generate anything, we might just roll on our own. Well, then we get static HTML, hand rolled, right? So in the, let's say in the good old times uh, where we didn't have any kind of framework, maybe not even dynamic uh, servers, we can just type it ourselves. Maybe good old Dreamweaver times, even before Notepad, just like HTML and write it ourselves. Very typical, very classic. So if you, if you don't have a server generating anything, if it's no SPA, what else is it? Okay, that's, that's the basic case, but what if there is no server generating HTML, but you still get an SPA? Let's take a look at that. And in this case, we go over to the yes side and we have a single page application with one of your favorite frameworks. Yeah, that can uh, be like Angular, Solid, Svelte, React, for example, Remix with an SPA mode. To my knowledge, Next cannot render just a plain SPA um, or Vue and for example, Next with an SPA mode. So yeah, that's the classical case, right? We have the single page application. It's the HTML is almost empty, maybe a loading spinner. It's not really generated because it's just a placeholder where the JavaScript will be inserted at build time. And uh, then the JavaScript is responsible for generating your HTML. This is how all the SPA frameworks work, right? So this is also nothing too crazy and it's a very good concept if you decide, okay, look, I just want to have an internal application. I don't need the content in the HTML. I'm fine with that. So you can definitely use that for anything behind authentication. And th that's not a problem in the end. It's also important that we come to it in a bit that most JavaScript meta frameworks also allow you to render parts of your application, let's say a certain part of a route as an SPA. So look and say, okay, maybe parts of them are only rendered on the client or the whole route is only rendered on the client. That's possible too, but we'll have a look at that in a bit when we talk more about JavaScript meta frameworks. But now we have to walk all the way up back on the tree and check the other side. And here we are with the does the server generate the HTML question again. We already answered that, but this time we go on the, the yes route and we see we are more or less in the server side rendering category. Because if the server renders HTML, it is, as the name says, server rendered. The problem is lots of people don't think of server side rendering as the server renders HTML and that's it. Commonly, especially in the JavaScript bubble, we have this typical case of 
the server renders your JavaScript application and eventually an SPA will come out of it. So um, let's see what other ways they are. And as mentioned before, we didn't even talk about SSG or pre-rendering yet. So we'll do that in a tiny bit. So of course, if we take yes, then we have a next question. And the next question is, will the app turn into a single page application after the initial request. And that's pretty important because there's the distinction between us using a JavaScript meta framework that only renders our JavaScript app as just explained or not. So once again, we go down the no path first and let's see what's expecting us there. And here we are in the no side. So we have a traditional framework or a static site generator. So let's see what this means. And we have another question here, which is, is the HTML generated at build time? And this makes a big difference because if we say no, then we have a non-JavaScript meta framework. So like uh, a typical other framework that's not related to SPAs, maybe not built on Vue, Angular, React, and using SSR. So some people call this traditional SSR, more or less because that's how the web worked forever. Imagine you have your good old PHP or Perl scripts and they just generate the HTML after maybe making a request to the database. That's traditional SSR. One could call it old fashioned, but that always has a little bit of a negative connotation. So traditional SSR, because it always has been that way, at least for a long, long time in the web. And as just mentioned, there are a couple of frameworks that, uh, or like languages as well, that uh, do traditional SSR. So here we have, for example, Java server pages, or now I think Jakarta server pages, a Django, Laravel, as mentioned before, Perl, PHP, we could even say Express, just serving HTML or any Node.js based backend, as long as it's just serving HTML, right? And not eventually bringing up a single page application when the server renderer of that single page application was used before. So far so good, but then we have more. We have the yes side. So the yes part to the question, is the HTML generated at build time? Well, the answer is yes, okay. Then we have a static site generator, which is not emitting an SPA. So one example, I would call them like non-SPA static site generators, but the problem is there is no real term for that. If we talk about static site generations, we just say, okay, we have static files in the end. And that's right, all static site generators will output static files, cool. But there is a big difference. If you just have static files and no JavaScript or like just a tiny bit, maybe for, for a menu here and there, um, then it's exactly that. It's a non-SPA static site generator. Uh, for example, we have 11T and also Hugo. And Jekyll also counts into that and so on and so on. So we have really an easy way to generate lots of lots of pages. We don't have to uh, throw in a server render of the framework of our choice because there is usually no framework behind it. Yeah, you can just use vanilla uh, JavaScript and you're fine. And these are the two big points for the side uh, of the no question all the way back up here. Will the app turn into an SPA after the initial request? And now we have the green side which we will have a look at, right? So the green side is more or less saying, okay, yeah, it will turn into an SPA. And then we have yes here, and it's clearly a JavaScript meta framework then, because if we get, if we really get an SPA out of it, then it's common that we have a meta framework that uses the server renderer of React, Angular, Vue, and so on, you name it. And then if you did that on the client side, reinitialize your application, uh, take over the server content through a hydration process and then things work. But there are still some distinctions to make. We are not done here. We can't just select the meta framework and we're done. We also go further down. And as I mentioned before, from here, the concepts can apply on a per route or per path base, and they can be mixed for some frameworks if they allow it. And it also applies if we talk about, as I mentioned before, single page applications as part of frameworks. Because as soon as we live in a JavaScript meta framework world, we have lots of lots of choices, choices that the traditional frameworks can't really do. They can't say, okay, please render all of that on the server, uh, but this part only as SPA. This is something that only works in the JavaScript ecosystem due to the tight integration between the meta framework and its underlying JavaScript framework. Take off, uh, let's say, Remix and React or uh, Nuxt and Vue. And we come to the next question, which is, is the HTML generated at build time? And now you might see Wait, we just had that, right? We had it on the other side of the tree. So you might already know what will come next. 
If we have a look on the no side, then we see we have a JavaScript meta framework, which dynamic SSR enabled. So we have more or less dynamic SSR, or also what I like to call it, server-side rendering in the JavaScript bubble, in quotes, of course. Because once again, lots of people that only work with JavaScript meta frameworks, they might not know the term SSR in, in terms of, oh, we have a static site generator not giving an SPA, maybe like plain static HTML just generated by a server at build time, or we have something like Laravel and Django or some old Perl script that generates the HTML dynamically at runtime without the overhead, quote unquote, of an SPR. But in this case, we always like have an SPA included to some degree or another. And of course we have the usual culprits here. We have like Angular SSR, we have Next.js, Next.js, but only if the route is not static. We have SvelteKit and Nux to they do that all in default, right? And it's very important to mention, now it might like, ah, yeah, but there's like, there are more things like ISR, ISG, and there's a little sentence down here because in the end, this dynamic SSR, right? So SSR on the fly, you can combine it with caching and in the end, you get ISR or SSG. You can say, okay, uh, I have a server and as soon as that server is rendering my JavaScript application initially, just cache it forever. Right? And this initial hit, this will always be in the cache and you have more or less incremental static uh, generation, right? Or incremental site, uh, static site generation. But you can also do the same and say, hey, let's revalidate it either on demand, like I send the request, invalidate the cache, or I say after six hours and also combine it with something like stale where I validate on the server. So these are all just fancy terms for dynamic SSR with caching. Surprise, surprise. Let's check out the other side though. And then we have one more line, one more line we, we didn't dive into yet. Before we move over though, like it is very common to use these frameworks for building your applications, but it's important to ask whether you need server-side rendering or not. And there are countless resources on that. Um, Michael and I also made a, a whole episode, actually the very first episode of our Deja View podcast and that, so also check that out if you're interested in. But in the end, if you need SEO, that's a good idea. If you have a public facing website, it's a, it's a really, really good idea. But especially if you have data that's often changing or that you need to be like dynamically available. Otherwise, there might be something else. That something else is on the green route here, on the yes route. So is the HTML generated at build time? Yes, that will net us a JavaScript meta framework with pre-rendering. So once again, it also works on a per route base. This, I don't say a JavaScript meta framework aesthetics high generator or something, but in the end it's pre-rendering, quickly fixing the typo here, pre-rendering in the JavaScript bubble, right? Or static side generation, quote unquote, in the JavaScript bubble or uh, SPA based static side generators, right? Let's maybe let's edit here, SPA based static side generators. Because also there, what will happen is they take your SPA, they server render it, and then they will give it out and an SPA will be eventually there again. And here we have more or less the same culprits we had before on the other side. We have Angular SSR with routes being set to pre render. We have Next if the route is static in this case. We have SvelteKit with the static adapter or Nux through Nux Generate or through a pre render route rule. And as mentioned before, first you can also say, okay, let's pre render these 10 routes. Let's uh, have this and this in SPA or use some ISR on other routes. That's all possible with the JavaScript meta frameworks. But especially when it comes to static site generation, it's really, really useful if you have data that will not change very often. Think about a blog, your personal website, even a course platform where you just have some landing pages, some sales pages, that's totally fine. The downside of SSG is of course you have to rebuild things all the time, right? So if you have lots of lots of pages, it's also not ideal. That's why we have ISR or ISG to make sure, okay, we can render them on the server, cache them and maybe revalidate them. But these are all very specific solutions to problems you might not have, or maybe you do, but then you know what to use now. Let's check out the very last line. For the last one, I zoom out a bit. And it's actually over here, where once again, the question, will the app turn into an SPA after the initial request? And we had like no one yes already. So what's that last line? And the last line is, yeah, kind of, right? Like to some degree. Uh, and fans of a certain framework out there, they might be already aware of what's coming here because if you don't have like a full SPA, but you also have no SPA, what you have then? Islands, 
Correct. We talk about the island architecture here. So, for example, frameworks like Astro or EOS.js. They are more or less a nice combination of the traditional uh, SSR and the JavaScript dynamic SSR type, because you can still say parts of your application, they should be, let's say, in React and Vue, and they can also hydrate. So you have like tiny, tiny mini SPAs in there, while the routing and all the head work is done by Astro itself. So that's a nice hybrid mode, so to say. And here it comes. All these modes are important to know, and especially even if you never touch PHP, Python, Java, uh, or like a plain static Node.js website with Express, Fastify, whatever, it's still good to know that. And if you talk about SSR or ISG the next time, or SSG or CSR, SPAs, all these acronyms, just make sure that you and your partner talking with, your conversation partner, you're both on the same page. You mean the same things. Feel free to share that infographic and go through together even. It's, uh, of course, in the description linked. And, well, of course, there are some more things. We didn't talk about things like uh, LiveWire or Phoenix Live View, for example. There are lots of other concepts and the map would be gigantic. Uh, let me know, though, if you're interested in something else besides these cases that are very important. But I think with that map, you kind of always know what you're talking about. And maybe that helps uh, the whole ecosystem and uh, front-end developers in the end to grow and decide for the right rendering mode. So maybe to answer in the, in the end the question, is static site generation equal to SSR? No, not really. But I personally think it's a subgroup of is the thing server rendered? We are in an SSR area. Now it depends, does it happen on the build time? So even 11T, okay, we generate HTML on the server, on, on the script somewhere, but at build time versus Okay, we have Laravel that generates my HTML on the fly, on demand. And in the end, it's just important that you know what exactly you're talking about, what exactly you mean. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, if that hopefully wasn't more confusing than helpful. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's anything you, you want to know about or you want to add. As usual, I'll read all the comments below, so please uh, put them in there, share it with your friends and family, and uh, see you in the next video. Happy hacking!